Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I finally am getting around to filming my wrap up for April. So a few things, um, yes, I, my hair is in twist. Um, this is my plan uh, going forward to let my hair lock. So it's in this stage right now. It's giving very much a lot of shrinkage and you know, I'm not feeling great about myself, but it's a process. So we're gonna get there. Shout out to my lock queens, Ashley and Brie for giving me the courage to go forth in this process because they look wonderful. Uh, so there's that. There's no Nigel today because Sir was acting a fool. And so I was like, you need, you need a moment to yourself because mama ain't playing that. So I'm going to get to these books that I read. Oh my God. Also. So we went to the outlets last week. One of the few things we were, we can do. Anyway, we went to Abercrombie, which I haven't been in since like, I do not know. And they had some things on sale, whatever. I got this. It's super soft, but they sprayed it with like, I don't know if it was a perfume or cologne and it smells so good. Now I wish I had it. It's also very much giving me 2006 and Laguna Beach. And I'm feeling that it's making me feel youthful. So I need to figure out what the scent is and then I need to buy it so that I can relive my youth. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. Also shout out to closet doors and angles because this room's a damn ass mess. There's just books teeter tottering, there's a mess and you can't see it. I love that for me. <laughs> So I've got my laptop here to go through them all. I read a lot of romance in April. I like to tell people I'm a romance reader. I am in a fantasy slump. Like I just do not want to read fantasy. I started Oathbringer, which is the third book in the Stormlight Archive at the beginning of April and was like, nope. And then I started reading uh, romance and that's primarily what I read in April. This month I have read some romance and like some mystery, but yeah, still not in a fantasy mood. So that's interesting. Anywho, I'll get started. So like I said, I started with Oathbringer and I got like a hundred pages in and I just was like, this is not hap this is not happening. I even tried the audiobook, like someone recommended following along the audio and I know that Brandon, Brandon loves those two narrators. It wasn't for me. So I said, mm -mm, and I returned to the library and then Mara from Books Like Whoa so sweetly sent me a novella by Courtney Milan, which I probably could reach right there and grab. Oh, okay, fine, damn, let me grab it. I just got the books freaking, it's a mess in here, okay? Okay, so Mara sent me Kiss It, wait, A Kiss for Midwinter by Courtney Milan, who's my Twitter bestie. She doesn't know me, but she's my Twitter bestie, and this is a favorite novella of Mara's, and so she sent it to me. So this is a doctor and a young woman so they initially meet like five years before the main story starts and she's like 19 maybe when they meet and he is already a trained doctor but he is um basically shadowing this doctor whose practice he's going to take over and this doctor is spewing some misinformation very like misogynistic stuff to her because she was pregnant and unwed you know all that stuff and so he is just sitting there because he's like, well, I'm supposed to take over this man's practice. I don't want to say anything out of line, even though he is out of line. Anywho, splash forward five years later and they meet and she remembers him, but he does not remember her. And so she is like, you son of a bitch. She just sat there and let that man talk to me like that. And he's like, who are you? And then he's like, oh, shoot. Yo, I'm sorry. Anyway, I don't want to say much more because it is a novella. I read it in one sitting but you know that things happen love ensues i love the medical aspects of it and there was wonderful discussions of consent in here and it was a really sweet and cute novella i think it gave it four stars but yes this started off my romance month last month okay i need to put things away but where do i put all this stuff i don't know i don't know okay then i read a dowry of blood by st gibson I heard about this on Twitter, I think, and all I heard was Dracula Brides retelling, but it's queer. Uh, the first line on the back says a lyrical and dreamy reimagining of Dracula. Wait, did I already read this one? I feel like I've talked about this, but I don't know when. Did I already do a wrap up? I don't 
wow, I don't know. Anyway, a lyrical and dreamy reimagining of Dracula's Brides, A Dowry of Blood is a story of desire, obsession, and emancipation. I think that's a perfect descriptor. And so it is a reimagining. So we have Dracula, and he finds his first bride and they're together for hundreds of years by themselves and they're like you know obsessed with each other loving it whatever because they can live forever then he finds a second wife and that's when things get a little tumultuous because she the first wife is jealous of course but then she's also like intrigued by the wife so there's that and there's a lot of hot vampireness hot vamp sexy times and then there's a third party who also, a fourth party, I guess, who enters later. I mean, because this is hundreds of years because they live forever and they travel from different places. And it was just, it really is a story of desire, obsession, and emancipation. And I was just like, hot, kinky vamps. My only issue was it wasn't long enough. Like, I wanted more because I was like, give me more vamp group sex. You know, I'm here for it. What, what does that say about me? I don't know. But if you're in the mood for that, again, another short one. I really love the writing in this. I'd recommend. Then I read Lakewood by Megan Giddings. So this was pitched as kind of like a thriller, kind of. But to me, I think it's more like borderline a horror novel. So the setup of this book is that so the main character, Lena, her grandmother dies and it's just her and her mother. Her mother has this unknown illness that doctors can't um, diagnose, but that she needs medication and she needs therapy. She needs all these things, but of course they're struggling. And so when they don't have money, she can't get these things. And she ends up having like attacks and having to go to the hospital. And Lena is in college, but she gets like this letter for kind of it's essentially an experiment, a study that if she participates in, um, that she'll get a lot of money. And so she's like, this is a great idea. I'm going to take a semester off college. I'm going to do this so that I can help out my mom, you know, get us out of debt. Mm, sounds too good to be true. Am I right? Also, Lena is black. So they, it's like... It's almost pitched as a job, but it's really a study. And so when she goes there to this place, it's like, I don't know, a few hours from where her mom lives. It's like this really small town. And they basically have this huge place that has on the outside, it's set up as a facade to look like a shipping company. And that's what like her job is billed as like, she's like a receptionist at the shipping company and everyone has roles as if it's like a traditional job. And they have like, Every day they give them scripts and things to write down if they have to contact family members. No, the job contacts family members for them, I think. Like, they have all of this stuff to make it a cover. Like, the people just live in this nice little town and they're just working at this nice little shipping company and making a good living. But really, they're conducting, like, psychological experiments. They're giving them medications um, that, have, that they're testing on them to see all these different effects. Certain people start to disappear and people don't know what is happening to them. Like some of the things I would have to reread again because I'm like, did I just read that correctly? Like it's really kind of trippy. And there's always like this tension of what's gonna happen next that I thought was really done really well in this book that I think have been missing from other things. But I still wouldn't say it's a thriller because it's not like trying to find out who done it, like following multiple POVs. It just, there's just this tension, like almost like when you're watching a horror movie and you're like anticipating someone to like jump out at you, kind of that, but in the book because you're like, oh fuck, what's gonna happen next? When she's talking to this person, what's gonna happen? When this person, like somebody, something's wrong with somebody and you're like, oh shit, what is it gonna be? Like, I guess I would say there's a little bit of body horror in there, uh, but it's really psychological because sometimes you and the main character are like wait is this real am i dreaming am i tripping on these drugs and you know of course there's people who are in charge who don't really listen to their concerns and kind of like yeah yeah, yeah this is okay it's normal we're gonna do this again we're gonna give you this other pill i don't know i thought it was excellent and of course it's a book talking about a larger conversation of kind of the history of America and how they would test on black people without their knowledge. Um, this really speaks to that, but in a creepier way. 
So I thought it was really good. It doesn't have, it only has like a 3.5 on Goodreads. This was good. This was excellent to me. So maybe if don't go into it, think it's going to be like thriller high paced, which to me, it still wasn't slow paced. It's just, I think it's better suited as like a horror novel. And you should read it. I read Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chin. I already talked about this in my last nonfiction wrap up video, which I'll link above and below, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great introduction to learning about asexuality, but I definitely need to read more about it. I'm so annoyed. This book is downstairs and I'm not going downstairs, but it like almost matches. Dang. No, I'm not going downstairs. Anyway, I've recently got a copy of this, but this is Sweet Hand by N.G. Pelter or Peltier. I, I apologize. Okay. I'm obsessed. This is my current obsession. I'm telling everybody and their mama that they need to read this book, buy this book, because there are only 267 ratings on Goodreads and I'm really confused. Okay. Because I don't know how many people I see buying things because of cover buys. And I don't know if you're seeing this cover wherever I put it here. But this is one of the most beautiful covers I ever did see. I really, the font, the colors, the people, the, the little cat, the cake. What else do you want? So I need you to buy this, okay? The next time you're just going to go cover by, I need you to get this. And then I need you to read it because it's amazing. So it's a black romance. Maybe that's why it doesn't have a lot of ratings. Anyway, that's where the author is from. And we have the main female, her name is Sharice, and she is a baker, which I have discovered is my new favorite pr profession to read about. Like, oh my God. But it also makes me hungry. But she's a baker, she has her own company. And then our male protagonist is Karen, and he works in the music industry as like a producer. And they had known each other pretty much always growing up and like, you know, didn't really like each other growing up. And they don't really like each other now for various reasons, but like inside they're like, oh dang, I haven't seen her in a long time. She looked good. She's like, oh shoot, is that, mm, he looks delicious, okay? So they don't like each other, but inside they're kind of like, I mean, I would hit it though. You know what I'm saying? And they have to work together because their besties are getting married and they are the maid of honor and the groomsman. So they have to work together or the best man and they have to work together. Um, woo! What's it called? Like rivals, dislike to lovers, chefs, kiss. Okay, great things about this book. Okay, I love the setting. Being in Trinidad, this description of like the beach and just like, I love when there's a set, a specific setting, like you tell me exactly where it is and you bring it to life, whether that's a beach or in the mountains or snowy cabin escape, like descriptions, loved it. I loved the baking descriptions and her talking uh, about her baking and what she did and how she built her business. And I loved, you know, that she was a, an entrepreneur woman, okay, also. I loved their friends in this book because they both had friends who like, you know, called them out on their <laughs> on their BS. And I just loved those friend relationships. And I think that there's going to be another book following one of the friends after this. And I, and I cannot wait. I love when there's a memorable side character, but it wasn't enough to overshadow the main character. Like I still love the main characters, but also love the side characters. Um, there's great talks. There's a lot of consent in this book. Like there's one part, obviously it's romance, you know, we're going to get together. So it's not a spoiler, but she's drunk and she texts him to come over and he does, he doesn't know she's drunk and he refuses to have sex with her. He's like, no, cause you're like this. She's like, I know what I want. There was just great displays of consent in this book. The main character is the main protagonist, Karen. He is bisexual, but it's just like normal. And like, no one's like, oh, that's weird. It's just like cool and I it all is just a perfect perfect story I loved everything I loved everything the setting the food the romance the drama the friends <sighs> it was just so good I just really don't understand y'all are missing out I need you I'm as as always I'm gonna have the books linked down below and I need you to get it okay I have a copy downstairs I'm just too lazy to go downstairs but I need you to get it because it's really a shame that this beautiful beautiful romance this the book is beautiful and the, the content is beautiful only has 267 ratings on goodreads okay i am disgusted and so i call upon you my family to buy this book or at least 
uh, request it from your library because I requested my library to get it, but I had already bought the ebook and then I bought the physical book. So, you know, I'm trying for my, for my dog. Like <laughs> I need y'all to get this up because it's truly a shame. It's truly a shame. Who was this published by? So this says that it was <clears throat> published by, I don't think I'm gonna pronounce this right, Piatkiss, which is under Little Brown, which is under Hachette, UK. And I need more promotion for this book. They better hype up the second one. It's atrocious. Anyway, all I can say is I hope that you read this because it truly was one of my favorite reads of the month, one of my favorite of the year so far. And we need, we need to give her her due. Okay, thank you. We I don't wanna clean my house. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I swear one day I'm gonna put these books up. Okay. The next I read At Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the third Brown Sisters book. The first is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, then Take a Hint, Danny Brown, now At Your Age, Eve Brown. So out of the first two, Chloe was my favorite. I didn't connect to Danny and I was a little disappointed when I read it. However, I don't know if it was my mood or if it was the book, but this one might be my new favorite. So Eve is the youngest sister and she kind of, you know, she's just been a spoiled baby. She hasn't really followed through with anything. She's gone to college for many different things, dropped out, tried different jobs, quit those. And so her parents are frustrated in her last venture, which was wedding planning. And she's given up on that. And so they're like, you need to find a job, you need to be responsible, you need to pay your own bills, and we're gonna cut you off from the you know family money. And so she storms out in a little temper tantrum and drives around to cool down. And she's like kind of out in the, the countryside and comes across a B&B &B and t stops for lunch, even though they don't serve lunch, they serve breakfast. <laughs> and when she sees a sign that they're hiring for a cook and is she, technically qualified for that no but she can cook and so they're in a desperate pinch the male protagonist Jacob <clears throat> is really in a pinch there's like this important food festival coming up he doesn't have anyone he needs help and so he ends up hiring her against his better judgment essentially Jacob is on the um, autism spectrum and he loves things very orderly and organized and certain things so he is very much um, the strict one and he's grumpy and she is just like sunshine and you're not gonna rain on my parade and he's like these are rules you need to follow these rules She's like I'm just gonna do it like this and he's very surprised when things like are actually working out in the restaurant and people love her and um, you know he's seeing her as a valuable asset to the B&B, &B, but also of course they're gonna fall in love. But I just loved the grumpy sunshine trope here um, because he would give her so much shit, but she would give it right back. And their banter was so funny and their sex was so good. It was so steamy and it just, it just made me smile and laugh the whole time. And at the end of this, I was like, well, I need a fourth book. And it either needs to be about Gigi, their grandmother, who has a partner. And I love Gigi so much. She always gives great advice and she's sassy and she does yoga. I think she teaches yoga, she's great. So I'm like, I either need a fourth book about Gigi or I need a wedding book where one of the sisters gets married, but it's like the whole family is involved in the book because I can't get enough. I loved this. I'm really torn if this is my favorite or Chloe, but I think this might be my favorite. I feel, I feel, I feel like I've betrayed Chloe, but I love this so much. And I love this color. Mm, yes, this is great. If y'all thought I was lying about romance, I also read Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. Getting Schooled is the first in a series by Christina C. Jones, and it's the Wright Brothers series. So in this one, we're following Jason, but I already read the second one following Joseph. That one's called Pulling Doubles, and I read that in March. And that one was a hospital romance. Ooh, I loved it. This one is Jason is back home after doing time in the army. I said doing time serving in the army and he's going back to school to finish up his degree so that you know he could get a different job and then reese who is the main female character is i think like a teacher's assistant she's like working on her master's degree and so that's how they meet because she's like the ta of this class that he's in and he is like writing his papers and he'll get like feedback from her 
and she's like dang she's like fall she's kind of falling in love with this person she doesn't realize who it is just by their writing but then in person when she sees and meets him she does not like him at all and her mom ends up dating his dad and so that just makes her angrier anyway they both have like traumatic experiences that they've ex that they've experienced and they handle them, them very and they handle them very different but they are such a good pair just because of like their banter back and forth and their personalities and of course it was steamy and delicious per the other Christina C. Jones book that I read. I will say that I loved pulling doubles a little more. I don't know why. I think that the angst, the, um, the like the hate lasted longer between the two in pulling doubles. I feel like this, I think this book was shorter. I can't, I don't know. Then the first one, I think this book was shorter than pulling doubles, but I still overall really loved it and loved their, um, friends even though I think it's you don't get to see as much of their friends and siblings in this one as you do in the second one I know that's really confusing but overall I still really enjoyed it and I need to read the third one and I, then I think there's a novella because I know Ashley just read them but another really great read in April then I read The Intimacy Experiment. I think I heard about this one from Mara. It's by Rosie Dannon. And so the setup in this one is the heroine is formerly a sex worker. She did pornography. And now she has turned that into an enterprise, like a huge business, like teaching people about sex and toys and play and all these different things, right? Businesswoman. Then we have a rabbi. Very, that was right there. I was like, so he's a rabbi at this synagogue that doesn't have a lot of members like the members are much older they're not really attracting the younger crowd people are leaving and so he's really looking for something to like bring people in and show that the synagogue is like you know keeping up with the times essentially and so she goes to like I don't know if it's like an expo or something and he comes up to her because he wants her to teach like a seminar at his synagogue and so at first she's very much like no because she kind of thinks it's like a setup to you know talk down to her like make her feel bad about her past and things like that because she's experienced so many instances that way but he's like no like honest like i really want you to help i want this to show people that we you know yes we care about our religion but we also want to be relatable and be open and open-minded and have young people and people in general have a safe place to come you know practice so eventually she does and she is still very guarded though because of her past experiences and of course you know they fall for each other but there is I won't say it's exactly grump sunshine but he's just like he's just like this positive glass half full I found my purpose I know what I'm supposed to do in the world kind of person and not like she isn't like she knows what she does she loves her business is very successful but she doesn't trust people as openly as he does he just thinks people have good intentions and he just is more on the not ignorant but kind of just more always going to go into a situation thinking the best of people and she very much is like I think this is a setup and so I really enjoyed that aspect of it I also really loved the faith aspect of it I'm not I'm not Jewish I'm not I mean I call myself Christian adjacent but I just loved hearing from someone in the faith who loves his faith he loves being a rabbi he really felt called to do that but he also doesn't want to be that kind of person that is like well you can be in the church if you are this this and this but not that he wants to be open and inclusive and let people in especially younger people and and say it was okay to ask about dating and ask about sex and all these things that can sometimes be taboo within religion um, unless you're married and so i don't know that part like there were parts in there where he was talking about that like his faith but then also why he wanted to do this and how he was committed to the synagogue and helping it grow and i was just like oh my god this is so beautiful like i don't know it made me emotional i will say that the lack of steam like there was like building up and then i'm like and you didn't give me anything was probably my only dislike of this book. Everything else I loved. And I loved his sister. And I loved her coworkers. I always love, especially in a romance, when there are side characters who are like, 
you know, they're there to be supportive, but when they know that their friend or sibling is acting a damn fool or about to miss out on an amazing opportunity or relationship, they're like, get it together, do better. And so for that reason, I loved this book. Then I read A Cowboy to Remember by Rebecca Weatherspoon. After I finished, I saw a lot of reviews and people were saying it was boring and they didn't like it, but I didn't feel like that. I felt this one was really cozy to me. So the heroine is a chef, also love, basically I love food related careers. Does that, what does that say about me? Yes, I'm always hungry. So the main, okay. So the hair of her, Evie, is a chef. She's like, she has her own TV show. She's already been on like a show that's like chopped or something like that, so she's well known. And she has like, kind of like this nemesis who was on the show with her, who is just like the worst. And she's at this Christmas party kind of thing. And this heifer ends up pushing her down the stairs. And so she is, you know, suffers I don't know if it's brain damage or just a concussion, but she ends up with memory loss. So she literally doesn't remember who she is, who her friends are. She has a roommate who's a teacher and then like her agent who are really great friends and an assistant. And she like can't remember like anything. And so they're like, who do we contact? Because she doesn't, her parents died when she was younger and her grandmother who was like her last family member died a while ago. So they're like, I don't know like who to contact, what to do because we can't have her walking around New York City when she, cause it said New York City or that's where she was living New York City because you know, she's gonna see people or fans and, and they can't be like, what you lost your memory because of course they want to keep this secret as long as they can from the network so she doesn't lose her position and so her roommate is like oh i know of some person that she told me like in case of emergencies so then we have the pleasant brothers who live in california on this ranch and so her contact is jesse pleasant but then there's also two other brothers there's zach and i can't remember the other brother's name and so they get the call that what happened and like, oh, we're gonna fly there immediately. And so Jesse and Zach go to New York. Of course, she doesn't know who they are, but um, she, they end up talking to her friends, her roommate, and they're like, yeah, we can take her back to California because they own this big ranch. It's a perfect place. They have plenty of space where she can stay and recover and hopefully her memory will come back and then she can go back to New York and hopefully get back to normal. So. It takes place out on this ranch in California and for me that's what felt cozy about it because you know there's horses and hay and dirt roads and just country life. I loved the idea of black men running a ranch and their grandmother lived there with they basically had like their own kind of like compound that was like they have like this mile long street and they have these big gates and a big old cul-de-sac and all their houses are around it honestly a dream you can pick your neighbors and so she ends up staying with the grandmother and the grandmother they knew obviously like she grew up with them um she doesn't remember this of course but she grew up with the brothers and the grandmother because her grandmother used to be like doing like a rodeo and or like training horses or whatever so she knows them for her childhood obviously right now she doesn't remember and the grandmother is the person who taught her to cook so the grandmother's like you know what well we're just gonna teach you how to cook again until like your memory comes back. And she also has like a, a home nurse that's there with her. And so slowly, so she slowly figures out that Jesse is like super overprotective of her and doesn't want her to like get close or talk to Zach. And she's trying to figure out why. And there's like a past history with Evie and Zach and so she's trying to figure out what happened there why jesse is so like up because he's kind of uptight very like protective but still kind of standoffish and so she's basically going through this trying to get her memory back and also just trying to remember her relationships and everything that happened and it goes from there i don't know i really enjoyed it i thought it was just sweet and cozy there were some really steamy scenes i loved the family dynamic I loved any time they talked about horses and um, you know, just the, all of the people in the story were really funny, like the siblings and they all had doggies and it was just a really cozy romance to me. So I don't know, I liked it. And I'm gonna read the next one. I think the next one is about the other brother that's not Jesse. But I feel like Rebecca Weatherspoon just announced that she's writing or just finished the book about Jesse. So I definitely wanna finish this series because I loved, again, another setting where I, I just loved the setting and I felt like I was there. It was cute, okay, whatever. And the last thing I read in April was 
uh, Murderbot 4, which is Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. I really enjoy Murderbot, but I will say the first one is still my favorite. They're really easy to read, really quick, but the last couple, the first one was my favorite, then I really did enjoy the second one. The third one was okay, and I felt like this one was okay, but it's still like in this weird place where it was like just okay, but I'm still gonna continue. So Murderbot is like an AI, he's literally a murder bot, or it's literally a murder bot, that's what it calls itself, but it's basically like a secure, a security forces robot that's hacked its module so it can control itself and it's not controlled by humans like most of them are. And so I think that the overall theme in these books is a lot of questioning on like what makes you a person or like humanity because murder bot of course is a robot technically but still with like human-esque qualities and they love to or it loves to I don't know they love to watch TV like s soap operas and dramas and they always have these conflicting feelings about helping out humans because it's like humans are the ones that control me but I also don't want them to get hurt and also questioning about what exactly they are because sometimes they modify themselves to look more human or all these different things and every one every story kind of has its own plot about something that happens that Murderbot ends up helping with. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know what, I feel like I liked the characters more in the first one and the story and the last couple ones have been like, they're kind of still building on that story, but they're just not, I never get really invested, I guess, as I did in the first one, but they're quick and fun. And so I'm just gonna continue to read them, even though I think the fifth or the sixth one is a full novel and the other ones have all been novellas. So that'll be interesting to read when I eventually get to it. But I was like, let me try a little sci-fi. And yeah, maybe if I hadn't read a ro bunch of romance, I would have liked it more, but I don't know. So those were all of the books that I read in April, a fabulous month. The romance really, it really did it for me. And but let me know if you've read any of these books or want to read any of these books, any thoughts or feelings about whatever I read. If you have any great romance recommendations where somebody ha is a baker, let me know, okay? Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll link all of these books in the description. Always check out my description because I'll either have whatever I talk about in the video link, links to my social media, links to things that are going on in the world and ways to support my channel. But please stay blessed, stay hydrated, stay sunscreen and moisturized, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.